Yeah, certainly. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Demetrius Pappas. Uh, he's one of our um, newest faculty member, uh, and we are very happy that he's today here. His interest is in interstitial lung disease, so that's lung disease in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, he's going to talk to you about it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hi everybody. So my vitamin D level is 17, which is very low. And this presentation reminded me that I need to fill, refill the prescription Dr. Hack gave me. So I'm going to talk about lung disease. And um, I will start with, uh, uh, with something I noticed. Rheumatoid arthritis, if you ask a medical student, a first year medical student, what is rheumatoid arthritis, they will tell you it's a disease of the joints. But uh, so far, we didn't talk about joints. We haven't heard the word joint. And this is because there is progress in uh, how we can treat joint disease. There is no inflammation in the joint with the medication we have available. And there is no damage over the years, as it used to be years before. And we can tell proudly that uh, an objective, a realistic goal for every patient, for every single patient, is what we call a remission. A remission is something that makes rheumatologists proud and physicians ha and patients happy because they don't have this inflammation and also in the joints because of more meaningful things for patients. They have a quality of life that is comparable to patients, to people without rheumatoid arthritis. They have full functionality. They enjoy a normal life. The only difference is that they have to take the medications and uh, see the rheumatologist um, on regular intervals. So the next step is to try to figure out how else can these patients be helped? Rheumatologists are doing okay with the joint disease. What else can we do in other aspects that rheumatoid arthritis may affect these people, such as uh, heart disease that you heard and also lung disease that I'm, I'm talking about in the next few slides? Why, why lung involvement uh, is of interest to us? Because lung involvement is more frequent in patients with rheumatoid arthritis compared to uh, the general population, and lung involvement is uh, the second major organ outside the joints and following the heart that may be uh, affected in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And the forms that lungs may be involved are overall uh, forms that you may be familiar with. Uh, patients with rheumatoid arthritis may have, uh, without rheumatoid arthritis may have the same disease, emphysema, bronchitis, there is also what we call interstitial lung disease. What happens in this case is that the fibers and the cells uh, uh, of the lung become more dense and the lung doesn't expand as well. Uh, nodules sometimes, like uh, the ones patients with rheumatoid arthritis have under the skin, these nodules may present in the lung. So, and other forms. And um, so what we wanted to do using this data from, uh, from the ESCAPE study is to try to find ways to diagnose this disease early. That's easy to uh, say it's difficult to achieve, though. And it's difficult because uh, usually the lung involvement in these patients is, uh, in the escape participants, uh, in you, is very mild. And this is also true for uh, the majority of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, patients may tend to underestimate the symptoms. Patients who have uh, rheumatoid arthritis for many years and have accumulated some joint damage may not be able to exercise so vigorously. And if you don't exercise, you may not experience shortness of breath and for other reasons as well. So it's difficult to diagnose uh, the disease early. But another problem with diagnosing the disease early is that we are not, uh, it's not a routine for the rheumatologist and the patient interaction to focus on other issues beyond joints. We usually ask you, um, about your morning stiffness, your joint pain, whether the joints are warm, red, swollen, how do you do with your medications? We don't focus in lung, in lung symptoms, in shortness of breath or cough. So the first thing we did is what happens if we ask these patients to figure out uh, whether they have any symptoms? And many of you will remember long forms, questions that were asking you whether you have shortness of breath, 
uh, after walking 100 yards or with uh, walking in level ground where you have coffee in the morning. So we, we collected all this data and what we find out is that out of 159 patients who completed this questionnaire, 35 had some cough. Uh, this is 22%, this is one of out of five patients. Um, one out of four patients had some flame production. One out of five patients had some shortness of breath. And then we wanted to see whether this indeed means that there is some lung involvement, some uh, lung abnormality. And the more objective way to say that is to use what we call pulmonary function tests. Um, you may remember that you were taking a pulmonary function test lab. You had to inhale and exhale in a tube, and this measured how well your uh, lung was expanding. And what we found there is that uh, three-fourths of the patients were completely normal. One-fourth of the patients uh, had some kind of mild, but some kind of abnormality uh, in the lungs. And when we put all this data together, we found that uh, uh, patients who have this objective evidence of this mild abnormalities in the lungs, they tend to have symptoms more frequently. For example, 35 of patients, 35 percent of patients with uh, abnormalities in pulmonary function tests have cough, as opposed to 16.7 percent of patients without pulmonary function test abnormalities. Um, and then the next question that we dealt with is, okay, there, there are some mild abnormalities. How rheumatoid arthritis affects uh, the lungs? Is it the rheumatoid arthritis that plays some role, or is because of reasons that may apply to patients without rheumatoid arthritis, such as smoking? Of course, smoking is one of the reasons, but we found that if patients with rheumatoid arthritis are positive for some antibodies um, that we find in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, CCP antibodies, you may be familiar with that, and patients who needed steroids for the rheumatoid arthritis treatments, uh, they're more likely to have some abnormality uh, in the pulmonary function tests. Um, so the next steps, since we have established that, is to find out how frequently these mild abnormalities may progress. We don't know that. And uh, how significant is this progression? Uh, how rapid or slow may be this progression? And um, uh, whether it would need treatment? And one central question here is, uh, in order to evaluate all these questions, to, to, we needed to find a way to measure this progression. Since the disease is mild, and since the disease may progress very slowly, the regular, the traditional CAT scans may not be able to give us information. Uh, sometimes the radiologist's eye may not be able to uh, see very mild, very subtle uh, changes in the lung and may be even more difficult to evaluate how this changes from year to year. So what we did is that uh, we used, uh, we're dealing with that right now, we used these CT scans that Dr. Giles and Dr. Bayton did initially to measure the calcium in the vessels of, uh, uh, of the heart. And we transformed these, these CAT scans uh, in a way that we can visualize better the, the lung parenchyma. And then, because it is very difficult, as I said, for a radiologist to evaluate very subtle changes, we used uh, automated computer software that can not only tell us whether a CAT scan is normal or abnormal, but can measure the damage. And uh, what is significant here is that if you can measure the damage, then you can measure it at a later time, and then you can find out whether there is any progression, even, this, even if this progression is, uh, is low. Um, and um, so what we hope we're, that we will achieve at the end by having uh, completed this study is that, first of all, we will understand much better what is going on with the lungs, why some people progress, where some other people may not progress, is the disease, are the medications that may be responsible, um, are other habits, uh, how important is smoking as opposed to rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, the ultimate goal is that if there is progression, to be able at some point to diagnose lung involvement uh, in rheumatoid arthritis early to prevent and treat it, uh, of course. Thank you very much. Excuse me? Did you have a study going on also? So this is, the study is in the context of uh, Office K. We're using uh, these data that have been collected um, 
at the same, during these three visits, and we're using, as I mentioned, the, the CT scans that were performed during, uh, during escape, and we're reading, reading these CT scans to see what is the lung involvement. Same patient. Okay, thank you.